everyone. Welcome to your functional circuits class. You're going to need a set of heavy weights today. So I'm using a pair of 20 pound weights. We will add in some jumping towards the second half of the workout. That being said, if you want to keep the whole thing low impact, I will have low impact modifications playing on the screen when we do get there. In the title of this class, you see the numbers four times three. That means we have four exercises per circuit today and three circuits total. So in each of those circuits, you're going to do the exercises for 30 seconds apiece back to back. You then rest for 30 seconds when you've completed all four, and you're going to complete four sets of the circuits if there's unilateral work, three sets of the circuit if there's no unilateral work. So in other words, basically two minutes of work, 30 seconds of rest. In between each of the three circuits, I will give you about a minute to recover while I show you a preview of the upcoming exercises. We'll start class with a guided warm up. We will finish class with a guided cool down. So let's get right into that warm up. You don't need any weights to start. Standing up tall, I want you to reach your arms forward at about chest height. Now we're going to roll the spine forward, but I want you to stay pretty neutral through the lumbar spine. So it's really just halfway. Arms are going to stay parallel to the floor. Inhale to prepare. And then as you exhale, nod the chin, start to reach those arms forward, articulating through the mid spine. Stay for an inhale, feel that expansion across your mid back. Exhale to stack the spine back up tall. Let's do that again. Big inhale to prepare. And then as you exhale, reach those arms forward, nod the chin, articulate through the upper and mid spine. Hold in this forward position. Big inhale. Expand through the rib cage. And then as you exhale, stack the spine back up tall. One final time on your next exhale, nod the chin, roll forward. Inhale, and as you exhale, stack the spine up tall. Now just turning to face you, I want you to take your right arm. And we're gonna come into a twist, keep the arms as they are. So you're gonna open up through that right arm, twist open to the right, and then close it back into center. Now the hips are not opening up as you do this. The twist is coming from your mid spine. So these first little chunk of our warm up, it's all about mobility through that thoracic spine. Let's take it over to the left. Open up, staying tall as if you could increase the space between your vertebrae. Hips stay pointing forward. One more time. Now let's come into some lateral flexion. We're going to do this fluidly. And we're going to kind of sweep one arm over as the other goes under. And then you're just going to switch, moving side to side. more time each side and let's reach those arms out to the side and let's just come into some arm circles so I want you to start small doesn't matter the direction because we'll switch switch shortly say that five times fast we'll switch directions shortly but I want you to start making the circles bigger and bigger now they're big but you can see your hands in your peripheral vision and you're not losing connection to your rib cage so don't flare open there now let's do the same thing opposite direction. Start small and you just gradually make those circles bigger and bigger. Mobilizing through that shoulder joint. We're going to switch the focus into our hips. We're going to come into a hip hinge to a squat combo in three circle for two. Last time I'm just going to turn to face the side. So feet are about shoulders distance apart. We're going to hip hinge, slide the hips back, maintain neutral spine. Then you're going to bend at the knees, drop into a low squat, and then you're going to drive your feet into the floor and stand. We hip hinge, we squat, stand. Spreading out through the toes, pressing them into the mat. Now, next time you come into the squat, you're going to hold in that squat. I'm going to bring your hands to your shins or your ankles. And from here, you're just going to straighten the legs coming into a forward fold. And then you're going to bend the knees, sinking back down into that squat, lifting the chest. And if holding on to your legs is not working for you, you can just keep your hands at heart center and just focus on bending and straightening opening up through the backs of the legs here. 
Next time you come into the squat, I want you to bring your hands to heart center, elbows to the inside of the legs so you're in this low, wide squat. And from here, we're just gonna rotate side to side a little bit. Now, if this is a little too much for your hip joint, you can always be up taller and you would just have your hands on your thighs. We're gonna come into some dynamic movement, some light cardio up next. We're gonna rise up. We're gonna meet in a wide, shallow sumo squat in three, two, and press it up. Okay, so feet are wide, legs externally rotated, so the feet point out slightly. We're going to come into a sumo squat, and we're gonna do a pivot, and we're gonna punch across. So you're gonna take your left arm, you're gonna punch across to the right, pivoting on that back leg, and then bring it back in. Keep going to the same side. So your right foot is planted, it's that back leg that pivots. Twist, punch across. Up next, all we do is take this to the other direction. In three, two, one other side to the left. So getting a little rotation within that hip joint and the spine. We're gonna come into jumping jacks up next. We're gonna do a chest fly with the arms. If you don't wanna jump, you can step instead. Three, two, one. Jumping jacks with a chest fly. So the arms go out and in, out and in. And again, your modification, step to the sides like so. Now notice I'm crisscrossing my legs as well. You can opt to do that or not, doesn't really matter. We're gonna go through that just one more time, the punches and these jumping jacks. You'll meet me in that wide sumo squat. Hand four, three, two, one, wide sumo squat, punch it to the right. We switch sides in three, in two, and one, to the left. Jumping jacks coming up next. Chest fly with that crisscross. In three, in two, and one. Out and in. Now we have just a little bit more mobility to go and then you are done with this warm up. We're gonna walk ourselves out to a plank position. World's greatest stretch coming up next in four, three, two, one. All right, nod the chin. Roll forward, hands to the mat. Walk yourself out into a plank position. From here, right foot steps to the outside of the right hand. Right hand reaches up, twist open. Right hand comes down to the mat. Step your right foot back, left side. Left foot steps forward. We twist open. Hand down to the mat. Step it back, pick up the pace. Right foot, right arm, hand down, step it back. Left foot, twist open, close it, step it back. Last time, right foot, hand, close it, step it back to the left, twist open, close, hold your plank. From here, we're gonna retract and protract the shoulder blades. Squeeze through the quads, glutes are active. Shoulder blades slide in towards each other, and then they slide away, come towards your armpits. So we're going for that uh, free gliding movement of the scapula, maintaining the strong shape of our spine. Four more, three, two, one. Knees come down. All right, I'm gonna show you a preview of our first circuit. We're gonna be down on the mat for our first circuit and you just need one weight. To start out, it is a chest press. Just gonna focus on one arm. Next 30 seconds, both hands come on the weight and it is a narrow press. The hips can lift up into a bridge position for that one or you have the choice to keep them down on the mat. From there, we will all hold a hip bridge position. One heel will lift up, the weight is gonna come to the opposite hip for added challenge, and you're gonna pulse the hips down an inch and up an inch. We finish by holding the hips up, weight is still on that hip, and the other leg is gonna extend out straight, and you're gonna lift and lower it. We're gonna do that twice on the right, twice on the left. Let's go. Okay, weight is going to be in your right hand. Hips are down to start. Your left arm can be extended out to the side. We're gonna start with a wide chest press. Let's go. Now when I say wide, I want you to think of when you do a push up. So your elbow is kind of coming down at a slight angle. 
So it's not directly out to the side like this. It shouldn't be at the same height as your shoulder. Now coming up next, both hands will come on that weight. We'll go into a narrow press, keeping the elbows really close in towards the side of our body. Option to lift those hips up into a bridge position. All right, both hands have that weight. Option to lift your hips up. Now, because we have both hands helping out, maybe you pick up the pace just slightly, okay? Don't want you rushing it. You're not tossing the weight up. So when we go narrow like this, you might feel the triceps a little more. Hopefully you do. Now coming up, this weight is gonna go on your right hip and we're gonna lift our left heel so that more of the weight is in that right side. Okay, weight to the right hip. From here, lift your left heel and it's just a little pulse of the hips, down and up in this glute bridge. You can keep holding onto the weight with both hands or you can return that left arm down by your side. I think I'm gonna do both hands. Now coming up next, we will hold the seat at the top. Your left leg is gonna extend straight up to the air and you're gonna lift and lower the left side. Let's go. So the right leg is stabilizing, left leg lowers and lifts. You gotta really squeeze into the seat. Keep reaching that right hip up high. You can do it. If you're tight through the hamstrings, feel free to bend that left knee as you do this, okay? and rest. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing, same side. So the goal of this first circuit is of course to work the upper body and the chest, but also to really activate those glutes for when we go into our standing leg work. So you have 30 seconds to recover here, just a little over 10 seconds now. I'm gonna go through that again, same side. So weight is still in your right hand, hips can be down to start. Left arm by your side. Single arm chest press, let's go. This one is wide. Narrow press up next. Both hands will come on the weight. Elbows will stay in tight to the sides of your body. Option to lift the hips up into your bridge position or you can keep them down for this next one. Ah, both hands on, option to lift those hips. You lower, you press up. Now in this hip bridge position, you're on the wide part of your shoulder blades. Don't come all the way up to your neck and puff open through the rib cage, okay? Up next, weight goes to your right hip, lift your left heel. Weight to the right hip, lift your left heel, really ground down through that right foot, lower the hips an inch, lift them up. If it's uncomfortable having the weight on your hip, you could pad your hips with a dish towel, or you can lay the weight flat across so it's on both hips, up to you. We're gonna hold at the top, up next left leg is gonna go straight. Hold those hips at the, top, at the top, left leg extends, you lower it, kick it up to the ceiling. Don't lose height through the hips. Make sure you're not flaring open through the rib cage. So think of reaching your tailbone long. Sometimes what happens is the hips start to drop, but we stay lifted through the rib cage and that causes an excessive arch in the low back. You don't want that. So lift up through the hips. Gotta really squeeze into that right side seat. Oh, and rest, 30 seconds. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna switch the focus over to the other side and I will just flip direction here to give you guys the better view. Okay, hips down to start. Weight is now in your left arm. We'll start with that chest press. Right arm can be down by your side. Let's go. All 
Narrow press coming up next. Option to lift your hips into the glute bridge. Both hands on the weight. Option to lift your hips. You drop the weight up or drop the weight down. Press it up. Up next, weight is going to go on your left hip. Right heel will lift off the mat. Weight to your left hip. Lift the right heel off the mat. Pulses in that hip bridge. Down an inch, elongate through the glutes. Contract through the glutes as you lift up. Really focus on that left foot pressing into the mat. So the hips lift up because the foot is pressing down. Get ready to hold at the top. Right leg will go straight up to the ceiling. Or keep the knee bent if you're tight to the backs of the legs. All right, hold at the top. Lower the right leg. Lift. Keep reaching the left hip up to the ceiling. You can do it. Both hips are the same distance from the ceiling, so make sure you're not dropping down to one side. Uh, rest. 30 seconds. Okay, we're just going to go through that one more time. Whew, and then we will come to standing. <sighs> Left hand has the weight for our chest press. Heels under knees so that we're ready for the hip bridge when we get to it. Hip bridge, glute bridge, shoulder bridge. I call it something different every time. I need to... <laughs> Get my messaging straight. Let's go. Single arm chest press. Elbow is wide. It's coming away from your torso, but it's not all the way up by your shoulder. Both hands on the weight, narrow press. <sighs> Option to have those hips in a bridge position. You do not have to though. And if you find it severely limiting your range of motion, then just keep your hips down on the mat for this one. We'll all lift them up next though. <sighs> Again, think of reaching that tailbone long if you're up in your bridge position. All right, weight comes to your left hip, lift your right heel, little pulses. Down with the hips, up. Down, drive the foot into the floor, squeeze to the seat. So this lift is coming by contracting your glutes. You shouldn't just be scrunching into your low back. So your abdominals are important. Ribs gently move in and down as you exhale. We'll lift that right leg off the mat up next, holding high in our hip bridge. All right, hold at the top, right leg is lifted. We lower it, we kick it back up. You can do it, hold strong through that left side. Don't let the hip drop down. Last few seconds of this first circuit. You got it, finish it. Oh, and done. Awesome job. You have a minute to recover. I'm going to show you our second circuit. We're going to use both of our heavy weights for this second circuit, but at any point, if you need to modify, drop down and just use one. First exercise is a staggered deadlift. Second exercise is a combination of that and a back lunge. So it'll be one staggered deadlift, and then you step into your back lunge position. From there, we ditch the weight. It'll be body weight the last two exercises. First, we do a back lunge to a front kick, bringing the hand towards the mat, but only if you can do so without hunching forward. And then we're gonna finish with a little combo. It's that back lunge, hand to the mat, and then you pivot into a squat position and you give me a squat jump. If you wanna keep it low impact, then just take out the jump. It would be the back lunge into your low squat. Back lunge, 
low squat just like that. So our right leg will be the focus to start. So your right foot's gonna be forward and then we're gonna stagger our left foot just about six inches behind the right and lift the heel so you're light through this back left foot. Square the hips, we'll start with our staggered deadlift. So the hips slide back and then the hips drive forward. Now you don't want the weights to cause your shoulders to round forward. So you're thinking broad across the collarbones. So my spine is the same shape here at the bottom as it is at the top. You're maintaining neutral, just hinging at the hips. Coming up next, we'll just combo this with a back lunge. So it's one stagger deadlift. And then you step that left foot back low into your back lunge up to your staggered position. Again, barely any weight in that back left foot when we do the deadlift. Contract through the glutes to come up out of the deadlift and out of the lunge. Weights are going to go down and out of the way. And we'll come into that back lunge to the front kick up next. Quickest transition you can, making it safe. So weights out of the way, right foot is still forward. Back lunge, front kick. Left foot back, left foot kicks forward. If you're tight through the hamstrings and kicking straight isn't happening for you, then just do a knee drive. Spread out through those right toes. And again, don't worry if you're actually touching the mat with your hand or not. I just want you to get low. We're gonna do the back lunge, pivoting into that squat, adding in our squat jump to finish. So from this back lunge, pivot open into a squat. Squat jump, reach back. Always over to the same side, to the right. Give me a jump. I have the low impact modification in the corner of the screen if you wanna take out that jump. Rest, Whew, 30 seconds. Okay, once more this leg. Now, if using both weights is a little too much, then you can opt to just hold the weight in your left hand. Right foot forward, left foot staggered back, square the hips, we start with our deadlift. You are very light through that back foot. Hips slide back and then contract through the right side glutes as you come to the top. Combo it with a back lunge. Back lunge, get low, up to staggered, one deadlift. When you do the deadlift, don't worry about getting super low. Depending on how mobile you are through the backs of the legs, you might just get the weight to the top of your shins, and that is fine. We'll ditch the weights up next. Make sure they're out of the way so you don't step on them. Carefully put that weights away, back lunge to front kick. Right foot is planted. Low, come up. So as you come to the top, think of squeezing the glutes, engaging through your abdominal wall. As I topple over, that was a bad example. We'll pivot into that squat up next. Let's go. From this low back lunge position, pivot to your squat, squat jump, pivot, hand towards the floor. You got it. Last time this side. Rest. Whew. Okay, we're at the halfway point. I'm gonna do that twice more with the left leg as the focus. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's do it. Left foot is planted and forward, right foot is staggered back. Square the hips. Deadlift. So the knee is bending, yes, but initiate the movement with the hips sliding back. It's not a squat even though a squat is initiated with the hip hinge too. So maybe that wasn't the best reference. Layer it in with that back lunge. Back lunge, get low, but keep your hips square to the floor. So when you step into this back lunge, don't just dump your right hip down to the floor. Get low by leading with your left hip. Okay, ditch those weights. Left foot stays forward, back lunge to front kick. Hand to the mat. But if you're hunching forward to get that low, don't even worry about tapping the mat. Just get to your personal lowest back lunge before coming up and kicking that right leg forward. Okay, let's do that pivot. So from your back lunge, come to squat, jump, or modify. Pivot on the feet. To the left, center. You got it. Rest, Ooh, 30 seconds. Okay, we just have to do this one more time. Staggered deadlift to start, left foot forward, spread out through the toes. Right foot is staggered behind you. So really finish every rep. Come to the top and really squeeze into the glutes, but without sinking your hips forward, okay? So there has to be abdominal engagement right along with that glute squeeze. Combo it with that back lunge. And same thing I was talking about, finish every piece of this by coming all the way to the top and really contracting through the left side seat. Deadlift, all the way to the top, squeeze. Back lunge, squeeze into the seat. Ditch the weights, body weight to finish the circuit. Back lunge to front kick, left foot stays planted. Get low, adding in a little speed, getting a little breathless these last 60 seconds. Maybe you're already breathless. I am a little bit. <laughs> We pivot, lunge, squat, jump, pivot to the left. Stay low when you pivot from lunge to squat and back again. Let's go right to the end. You got this. Done. Ooh. Okay, you have a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our final circuit. Final circuit is just three rounds because there's no unilateral work and you will just need one single heavy weight. First exercise, you're gonna be in a kneeling position. It's a biceps curl and then you hinge forward and you give me a row. 
If it bothers your knees, you can do that when standing, but keep in mind kneeling will make for a easier transition into our second exercise. Second exercise, you're in a bear plank position, so those knees are just hovering a couple inches off the mat, and it's a drag across, so you pull the weight with the opposite hand to the opposite side. From there, you ditch the weight. We're going into surfer get-ups. It's kind of like the bottom half of a burpee, lowering your chest to the mat and then jumping up and landing in a low squat with one foot forward like you're jumping on a surfboard. If you want to do a push-up instead of lowering your chest all the way to the mat, that is an option. Final exercise, it is two squat jacks and then two jumping jacks, so low and then high. And again, I'll have a modification playing for that one, but basically you do a squat pulse and then you would step one foot out at a time. So you're gonna grab the weight on its ends for this one. Kneeling, you can fold the mat over so you have more padding or you could do this standing if kneeling doesn't work. Squeeze to the glutes, abdominals are engaged. Without rocking back, we're gonna do a biceps curl. Lower it, hinge your hips back and give me a row. Squeeze to the seat. So when you do that biceps curl and the row, you need to make sure you're not sinking into your low back. So do it on an exhale so that you connect with your abdominal wall. That's gonna help. Now coming up next, when we come into that bear plank position, keep the weight in this direction, okay? It's gonna make it easier to uh, drag. So put the weight down the same direction, hands come right in front of it, hover your knees two inches. Opposite hand drags the weight reach and pull. Now you want as little rocking of the hips as possible. Don't let your hips pike up into the air. So those knees are really just a couple inches, no more than that. If you need to modify this one, drop your knees down onto the mat and just do the drag. We're done with the weight after this. Move it out of the way, whoop. Sir, so forget it. So step back into a plank, lower your chest to the mat. Jump up, landing in a low squat position. One foot is in front. Other direction. Coming up, you'll land in that low squat and we'll go right into our jacks. Okay, from your low squat position, it's two jacks, two jumping jacks. Get low, come up. Rest, Whew. 30 seconds. You'll notice on those jacks, I'm bringing my hand all the way to the mat. You don't have to, but I do want you getting really low in that squat. Twice more. Grab that weight, bicep curl to row. When you do the row, it's initiated with that retraction of your shoulder blades. So don't think of getting your elbows up as high as possible. Focus on your back, then the elbows move. Try to maintain neutral through that low back. When you do the bicep curl, it's gonna be very tempting to lean backwards. So almost think of leaning into the exercise. Okay, weight comes to the mat, bear plank position, hover those knees, dragging it across. Get ready to move the weight out of the way. Weight comes out of the way, so forget it. So you're lowering yourself down to the mat with control. So you can keep your knees down on the mat when you first push up, then tuck the toes under and jump. That way you lift up in one straight line and you're not sinking into your back.
All right, in that low squat position, two jacks, get low, then come up. Get low, low. Rest. All right, one final time through, then we cool down. Let's do it. So neutral pelvis, squeeze to the glutes. Now lean forward just slightly when you do that curl. It's not that I actually want you in a forward lean, it's just that I don't want you to lean back, which it is very hard not to do. Lean into the curl. That's gonna help you stay upright. Weight to the mat, bear plank position. Opposite hand grabs weight and pulls it across. Make sure knees are under hips, hands are under shoulders. Exhale, pull, stabilizing through the hips. Ditch the weight, get it out of the way. Sir, forget it, so let's go. Get down to the mat with control. Hop up, hands come off the mat. Again, you can step to your low squat. You can give me a push up instead. You could just do push ups. You could do those push ups from your knees. So many options. Okay, you're in that squat position, two jacks. Low, two jacks, high. Final 30 seconds. Done. Woo. Awesome job. Take a second to catch your breath and then I'll bring you through a quick cool down. Let's just start with a standing quad stretch so you can shift your weight into your left leg. Grab the right foot in your hand. Give it a gentle tug in towards your bum and then just bring your pelvis to neutral. When you're ready, we're gonna switch over to the other side, shifting weight into our right leg, grabbing the left foot in our left hand, pull it in towards your seat, pelvis at neutral. From here, I want you to separate your feet nice and wide, and we're just gonna forward fold. And for a little bit of release, I just want you to sway side to side, you can softly bend into one knee as you go over in that direction, whatever feels good. Next time you sway over to the right, I want you to bring your hands to the shin or the ankle and just hold. Let's take it over to the left. Coming up next, hands are gonna to come to the inside of that left foot and let's just pivot to the left, coming into sort of a lunge position. Step that left foot back to meet the right 
and then hips go up towards the ceiling, downward facing dog. Pedal out the heels a little bit, and then I want you to just press them down and stay in the stretch, opening up across the back of the calves. We're going to come into half pigeon up next. If you know that does not work for your hips, you can take a seated or a figure four stretch laying on your back, or you could even do a seated twist. If you're gonna do the half pigeon though, let's take the left or let's take the right knee forward. Lower the shin down, walk yourself back, and your head can come to rest on your forearms. It might feel good to prop your hip up on a pillow. Notice where you're holding tension and try to breathe into those areas. Big inhale, slow exhale. Stay here as long as feels good. When you'd like to move on to the other side, you'll press yourself back to straight arms. Let's come through downward dog one more time. And then the left knee will come forward. Settling in on this side. If you're holding tension in your jaw, try to relax it. Up next, we're gonna come into a chest opening stretch. We're gonna lay down on our stomach. We're gonna transition there through a plank. So when you're ready, let's press up to straight arms. Step your left foot back to meet the right. And then with control, lower yourself all the way down to the mat. So you're gonna keep your right fingertips tented, elbow kind of up to the ceiling. Stretch your left arm long out in a T shape. And then we're just gonna twist ourselves up and over. So that right foot comes to plant behind the left leg. Ah. <sighs> Then we're just going to hold here. So much of that class and really almost all strength classes, so much of it is maintaining your spine in a neutral position. So it feels so good to finish class in a cool down with some twisting through the spine. I think anyway. When you're ready, we'll take it over to the other side. So your right arm will reach long, left fingertips on the mat, elbow kind of up towards the ceiling, and then kick that left foot up and over, coming into your twist. <sighs> Opening up across the front of that right shoulder. We're gonna come through center. And to finish up, I want you to press yourself back into a child's pose. I want you to start with an active child's pose. So engage through the abdominals and round your spine up to the ceiling just so we get this nice flexion. Uh, one more breath like this. And then I want you to just melt. Knees can come wide if that feels good. Chest melts down. Maybe forehead even comes to rest on the mat. And let's just finish with a couple breaths here. When you're ready, let's walk our hands in. Roll your spine up tall. And that is your class. Awesome job.